Um, so, welcome to the beginning um, of this lecture series. Uh, we have um, a lecture coming up in February, February 26th, and a cave is the next one that's scheduled. Um, and I'm very happy to introduce uh, Michael Berryhill. And Michael Berryhill was born in El Paso, Texas, and received a BFA from UT Austin and an MFA from Columbia. Um, exhibitions include Cave Verbal Gallery, Kansas, and Van Dorn Blaster, all in New York. Uh, the Gallery of Marta Cervera in Madrid, uh, Night Gallery in LA, the ICA Maine College of Art, uh, the Green Gallery in Wisconsin. And his work has been reviewed in publications including Art in America, Book and Rail, the New York Times, and fellowships and residencies include the Artisan Residence Program at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. The Marine Wall Star Program and Skagi. Um, Michael's paintings are both very tactile and very ethereal. Uh, he layers time, space, and color to create pictures that feel like fluid stage sets. Um, the images are hard to pin down, make you want to keep looking again and again. And I'm very excited to introduce Michael Dart. <laughs> uh, thanks for having me, and thank you, Jonathan, for inviting me. It's nice to see a lot of uh, people that I know here. It's very nice. Uh, I'm glad I didn't pack the room. It's sold out show pressure. Um, all right, so since it's such a small room, also, like, if you want to have a conversation while I'm going, I'm super up for comments and questions as we're going. Um, I'm kind of the type of uh, painter that considers myself to be almost... Uh, it's funny to give a talk and to always agree to give a talk. I like doing it, but I kind of think about myself as being very nonverbal as, as it pertains to painting. I think about my paintings being uh, either pre-verbal or post-verbal, or if, if that's the same thing, I don't know. But just I know that I make paintings so that I can put something in front of me and the, in between me and the world so that I don't have to do some interesting show, which I'm gonna try to do right now. But uh, so I'm gonna start with the very most recent thing. Uh, I just had a show that came down in LA um, last week. So these are fresh. I'm gonna double back to them probably, but I'm just gonna run through them. These are kind of, I don't know if you could tell scale. These are like seven foot maybe. I'll talk about them uh, maybe towards the end. But also when they're fresh, like I kind of don't, uh, it'll become apparent that I kind of like keep myself in a state of like not knowing really what they're about. Like I like titles, I title the show, I get a feeling, but um, I kind of don't always uh, know how they fit into the lineage of everything that I've done. It's kind of, uh, one of my attitudes about being an artist is kind of a, uh, an, a wide, wide base of styles and kind of like, so that I can move around. I can kind of change what I'm doing at any point. That's my idea in my head. It doesn't always seem that way, but it's like what I hold in my mind is a thing to do. Like that's being a real artist is you can just change the way things look, uh, the, the scale, the subject. I'm, kind of a, I'm a painter, but I feel like I could just change the way the work looks and you'll see what I mean, maybe. So I'm gonna take it back uh, to, I was talking to Sean about the very first moment that I kind of felt like I was doing the thing, like being an artist. And it's, it's like, uh, it's a late bloomer. And it, it's like five years after undergrad, um, I was living with a, a painter named Daniel Dove, who is a, good friend of mine, and he had just finished going to grad school at Yale, and he moved back to Austin, Texas. And I just never, I was friends with him before he went, and when he came back, he was so intense about being in the studio and working that it kind of uh, was, it was contagious. So this is kind of that period where I, uh, I felt dedicated for the first time, and I kind of felt, uh, yeah, like I, like it, like I was on, on a, I was following something that I, that I knew what to do for a while. But this is what my work used to look like. So I'll go through it. There's also a period where I thought you had to have, uh, I really had to have a plan. Like I was a designer more than a painter. I was really planning out, not that it's apparent 
in the like what the narratives are but to me it was a lot of planning and and like source gathering and I kind of built them before I painted them um, scales were all over the place I've always been uh, all over the place with scale but um, I was very attached to meaning and and read, readability like I thought and even the I always stipulate that they're not readable. I, I know that, but I, I thought they could be. Like, I really thought about them being read. I was also doing this thing, um, kind of like relying on the authority of art historical references. Like, I would take a painting like this, uh, this St. Francis painting, uh, Bellini painting in the Frick, like one of my favorite paintings in New York. And I would just uh, kind of do, I would do something to it to, to take it and make it mine. So I would compress, you know, compress the image kind of with these, these uh, colored, I guess, string. It was kind of pulling the image together. But I thought like it, I thought all art jokes, like everything's art about art and during this period. Because I had moved to New York and I was really obsessively trying to see every show and really going to museums like I'd never done in my life and so it just occurred to me as an art idea to kind of lean on art history in a way that um, it was just there for the taking so I would kind of make these quotes and I thought of them as hidden like I thought they were just unless you were like a real um, like this is a Poussin painting and unless you were an art historian like you would miss it I, th I thought um, I would also do things like um, just test the integrity of like an old Poussin painting so like you could flip it on its side like the one in the center is the same painting flipped on its side uh, let's see that painting I would play it straight and distort everything and then I would kind of test the composition and I would it was so versatile like old paintings are so uh, worked out that you can really like flip them around and this was what occurred to me at that period so I was just stealing these quotes and making these paintings This is probably 99, yeah. So I was, uh, yeah, I was also thinking about going to grad school. I went to grad school really late. I took like a 15 year break between undergrad and grad school. And um, this was right about that time when I was really trying to get into grad school. So it was the body, I was thinking of the body of work, like things being consistent. So another Bellini painting. I was also thinking of, uh, this idea of meaning, a meaning of a painting like this, which is kind of lost unless you like really read about, I mean, for me, it was like I, I grew up uh, like in a Catholic house, but I didn't know anything about religion. And so I didn't know the stories really. I didn't read art history yet at all. So I would just kind of like find it to be a compelling image and then I would just use it. And I was testing if you could drain it of the original story, like take the context out of it, would it still have power as a painting? This is an idea that um, occupied me during this time. And so, yeah, I would take a painting like that. I went through tons of these, like um, Piero della Francesca painting. And like, could it, could it stand like the religious context being emptied out and, uh, you know, musical instruments and amps and guitars being placed in almost like a volume for volume swap. And would it still feel uh, m meaningful? You know, would it, would it carry the weight of the original painting? You know, was, I was really testing out um, how flexible these things were. Um, Did you find that copying paintings changed the way that you painted? Yeah. yeah. I felt like I was learning how to paint. You know, because I was like, before that I was using bad printouts or uh, the reference materials were um, as crappy as possible, kind of, to, to spark the, the drawing, maybe. But when I was like trying to copy a painting, like it was kind of, it was fun and difficult and you had to decide how detailed to get. And it wasn't about, then it wasn't about detail, it was about getting, if I was true to the project, it was just getting the gist and the composition kind of so yeah and I think about copies a lot now like when I'm really stuck I haven't done it in a while but I'll, I'll do a copy and it's always pretty fun yeah. I think it's a good idea for a show like a bunch of artists doing copies or something have you ever done a copy yeah 
Yeah? Oh, really? You got to tell me about it. Um, <clears throat> okay, so this is uh, more of this period. And uh, so, how does that tie into my... So yeah, this, this attitude of like um, really having a plan was kind of drying up during this period. And I started doing paintings like this where it's just like almost, it has this narrative, but it's like a wacky narrative, you know, like almost like a, a not knowing what to do and just waiting for an idea and then trying to make a painting about that and just kind of playing it straight, like just like, uh, you know, Rip Van Winkle of the studio, kind of waiting for the, the art ideas to come. I was also really trying to paint uh, well <laughs> during this period. Um, and this is probably the last painting that I can remember that I was relying on that old like architecture, like having a plan and trying to tell a story. Uh, and as bad as the uh, politics feels right now, I mean, this is like, this was the Bush years. And this is, this is a painting I did right after 9-11. And it was, uh, you know, this painting to me, it was, I was trying to make a painting about the, you know, just the cynicism of that administration and how they would put on a laser light show on the rubble of 9-11 to distract the public. I was really still convinced that paintings could be this direct communication. I was still trying to do it. And, uh, I think what came next is like, I, I start to just leave that behind. Um, so I also never lost and still have the idea that paintings are either, uh, you know, I try to dumb it down to like person, place, thing. And then I try to head towards like name ability. So if it's a head, I try to make it a head or a thing like a sculpture or a place like a landscape. And I, I just try to, follow that all the way through. So this is probably during grad school, if I remember. So I was just trying a little bit of everything during this period. Um, it's also the first time I met, um, I didn't know who Charlene von Heil was when I went to grad school. And she kind of changed the way I thought about what art, what being a painter was, which was, uh, you know, is all about being kind of surprised by what you were capable of doing. Like, if you lose yourself, I mean, there's a lot of artists talk about this, you know, Philip Guston and, and uh, even people that are more straightforward picture makers. But the way that Charlene von Heil talked about it really changed the way that I kind of, I really let go of that idea of having a plan. And I kind of was just open to, um, like, that's, trying to make something uh, slow, you know, like hard to read at first. And then, um, you know, and then you would pick something like a face, like it's always a face or something that you could name but can't quite hold on to. So that was this whole period of, of image making. Mustache jokes. Always something that you could kind of like hang, hang on to just a little bit, but it wouldn't sit still like my older paintings, which were trying to either be painted well or really descriptive and nameable. So, um. so if you didn't have a plan, how would you start? Yeah, so th this period also coincided with really doodle, doodle heavy studio practice, right? So I would, I still do this and go through periods where I forget that this is what I do, but I just, will doodle and keep a giant pile of scrappy, like intentionally crappy paper and ballpoint pen or markers. And I'll just like um, kind of as small as possible sometimes so that they look serious at a small scale, you know? It's the only interesting thing left. We were talking about Instagram a second ago over here. And uh, the idea that you're looking at images at this scale is really interesting because you have to be able to read like something like a, even a big painting at like one inch scale. I find that like kind of interesting, like, cause if it's compelling at that scale, maybe it's good, maybe it's not. But um, that's certainly in my drawings. So everything starts from a doodle. Um, and that really got me away from references and planning. And uh, 
I've tried to be consistent with that. Of course, you still get stuck, and then, you know. But the longer I work, I could just cannibalize older paintings of mine and treat them like things to manipulate also. So, yeah, but very drawing-based. I also still don't feel like I know how to paint, really. You know, I mean, I feel like a drawer, a natural drawer, and a kind of a painting's always a struggle, like to be good color or um, kind of like a good touch. That's why they're very scumbly and dry and kind of like overpainted or underpainted, kind of. That's my, that's my vibe. If you see them in person, it's like they fluctuate wildly. But um, even the overpainted ones are kind of like um, fresh on top. Like there's one final day that kind of could have been a whole painting, that, but I needed to do all the underneath layers. Um, yeah. I feel like my paintings are very different in person from reproduction um, because of that. I'm a, I operate on doubt. Uh, like, I don't think a painting is done for like a, r a really long time. Even a really fast looking painting. Um, I think in these slides I have a thing where I show like a process of a painting to kind of like show what happens. But um, even when one feels kind of light and fast, it, I like a nine month period if I can get it <laughs> to do that. It's ridiculous. but. I also start 30 things at once, always. There's always 30 unfinished paintings, usually, in the studio. All right, let's see if, I'm not sure, getting to the end of a period here. Um, yeah, it's funny, like, I kind of think, I've, I've read, um, I've been lucky enough to read some of these uh, writings about my paintings, and I always think that people other than me are better at talking about my own work, which uh, maybe is useful. That's why I can keep going, maybe. I don't, I don't know. There's uh, something about knowing what you're doing too well is, uh, stops the weirdness or something. So, um, I also think this kind of thing where you, uh, I like to have something pretty straightforward and, uh, and could be a realistic depiction of something next to something that you don't know what it is. Like for me, this is a very understandable image of a hole in a wall peeking into an art studio. But for a long time, it was, uh, it was more like one of these paintings of an unknown object. And I just threw in that little palette, the little table and then the painting in the background. And it kind of, uh, I don't know, it entered that zone of where it wasn't unknown, unknown. It was known and unknown simultaneously, which is something I'm always, if not from painting to painting, within each painting, I want there to be this kind of like, I think I can understand it and I, and I can hang on to that one understanding of the image. I also like to overload, like I have a lot of pictures. So I'm gonna go back to the beginning and talk about the most recent stuff. But um, this is more of that kind of idea, like the, the, there's a cow butt, like leaving the upper left-hand corner of the painting. And the whole painting is like kind of dependent on, like that's really for my, for my painting style, like I really painted that, like I really wanted it to be uh, painted well, like almost like as as realistic as I could get it, and uh, have it clash with this center object, which I didn't really know what it was while I was making the painting. Um, right about this time, I, th I think this was like, two th I can't remember what year this was, but I had just gone to this place in Spain. Uh, has anyone ever been to Cordoba? It's like, a, there's a um, a mosque built over a cathedral. It's like in one building. And I, and I don't remember exactly the details, but it's something like it was a Visigoth kind of Christian church 
And then when uh, there was like Muslim uh, Islamic rule in this same area of Spain, and they started building a huge mosque, like a massive mosque. And then the Christians came and back and took over. And the fact that both of these things, like the, the Islamic revolution or whatever, didn't take over, they didn't destroy the Catholic church. They kind of preserved it. And then when the Catholics came back in, they kept the mosque part. And it really hit me. This is the kind of art idea that I like. It's like, it's probably because it was just so interesting. You know, it had nothing to do with um, the use value of the thing or like the real information of the different faiths. It was just because it was so beautiful and the experience of it was so um, useful from a, like a spiritual standpoint that they both had to survive. So that's kind of how I think about, I mean, it's a big leap, I guess, but the knowable and the unknowable is like, um, yeah, it's almost like the, the weird spirituality that I think about in painting. It's like this, I guess it's like faith. It's like having an experience in front of a painting is, uh, is kind of like nothing else. You know, it's like they got that haunting quality when it's, when it's good. Even if it's light, it's got that kind of, uh, you don't know why it's working kind of thing. Um, okay, let me speed up. Also, this kind of like um, cartoony imagery has always been uh, like a go-to. Like, I think it's in every painting in a way. Like, something about the cartoony thing is just, uh, I don't know, it's replaced kind of this realism for me, like drawing these hands. Um, the fact that it conjures the word hand in your mind, even though it's like really goofily drawn is something that I, I think about in painting. Like it could be just suggested. Everything could be kind of um, just, just enough to get you to, well, I'm gonna, it's contradicted by my recent things because I think I've gone more into this um, more descriptive way of being cartoony, if that makes sense. I'll go back to them. Yeah, no, no paint sticks. It's all, it's all kind of oil paint with no medium, you know? So it's almost like back to this idea of, I don't think I really know how to paint in that way. Like, I don't really know what medium. I've played with it, but yeah, it's all dry brush. So it's, it's linen mostly, yeah. And I, I like linen for the dumbest reason, probably. Just the sides of the paintings, you know? I like that kind of like brown color. It's just something um, okay the dry dry brush is the is kind of the only way I know how to like um, I guess it's like drawing with paint it is like paint sticks but I don't um, I kind of don't like the way those feel plasticky or something Like these two types of things, like this is a this is a shape that like I don't even realize till after I made these like right after each other. And I didn't realize they're kind of the same thing, like this kind of weird uh podium or altar thing. And they came they were that got resolved in totally different ways. But it, this type these are my f favorite kind of like lump thing in the center, which is also a thing you're not supposed to do or like just to put one image in the center is something that I, I'm constantly doing. I feel like I want to get to these other paintings. Who said you're not supposed to do it? Yeah, just like as a, as like a default, you know, like kind of like the subject in the center, you know, it's not very dynamic to, I kind of feel like um, the concession of doing something flat footed, uh, gets me to invent all the other things, whether color or texture or shapes, just by, like this one, for example, is always, uh, there was something in the center of this one that I had to cut it away. I had to cut out the center 
to make this image. So I'm always doing the wrong thing and then fixing it and then, and then going back to what, what works, I guess. Mm. All right, I'm going to fast forward to this is uh, this is kind of the beginning of what I think of as going on now, which is kind of like the same process of drawing and then getting lost and then finding the kind of the figurative thing, which is kind of in the latest works. This this is a while back though. This is maybe God 2015, but this. I'm still kind of working through this kind of idea. Um, this orange shape. So I, I'll show how this one was made too. I think I have the process of that one. Um, okay. Let me get to the end. I'm going to circle back to some of these. Okay, so this is, uh, this is kind of how I work. This is kind of what it looks like. So this is the final painting. And this is the beginning of the painting, which is based on a drawing. So I'll start with this kind of, this drawing will be on a tiny scrappy piece of paper and it'll look a lot like this. It'll be this similar color and everything, like yellow paper. And I'll, I'll just be dissatisfied for a long time that it's not as good as this little piece of paper. And so I'll just alter it until until it does something and changes significantly enough to kind of rival this tiny little scrappy drawing. So recently I've been drawing digitally also, so I'll use an iPad. So this is like digital drawing on top of a photograph of the painting. So I'll try to like, you know, will myself to like really wreck this painting and kind of take it into like, really make it fail, like a really dumb decision, like a, a rat lifting weights will show up. And then that, I will never paint that. So that just happened. And then I changed the painting completely. And then I'll, I'll hang works in the studio that I think are working well, like next to it, to try to kind of like get it, get it to, to give me the right information, get the right color, the right moves. And uh, this painting, this dumb painting, this simple painting, took, I think it was a nine month period. I'm also working on other, you know, all these other paintings at the same time. But the, this is the standard procedure, usually. Uh, I thought about making a mariachi band, two figures. And then after all of those attempts, I'll take it back to the original plan. Some, this often happens where I'll just like stick to the original plan. I'll remember where I started and I'll, I'll take it all the way back there and then still unsatisfied. And then I try to bring in this old idea of like the, the old Renaissance, you know, like a Velasquez horse will save me and I can just put that in there and then change that. And then that changes. And so this is how this painting ended. I was uh, from this stage to this stage is like one day of painting and I have no photographs because I was just painting on it. And it's, it almost figured itself out in one day. So this is the final painting. But it took like this ridiculous nine month period to do this final move. Uh, yeah. Is that all additive or is there any point where things get scraped It almost doesn't need to be scraped because it's so, I keep it pretty light and flat for so long because of this dry brush thing. And also, if I load up the brush with a lot of paint dry, I'll, like, uh, I'll know it's almost done or something. So it'll be like a, a really big color move that it has to go in an area. But yeah, I almost keep it thin and dry and like draw, drawing for a long time. This is the other way I work. This is another painting that is, it kicked around for six months, but it really only got touched, uh, you know, essentially four days worth of painting, but I, I had to look at it for six months on the side, you know. So this is the original drawing, which matches up with the drawing that I did. And it just barely gets touched with color. And then I kind of carve away at it and I see kind of like a, a cat or an owl, or I start to recognize this name ability thing. And then I just kind of hyped up the color 
And that was that. Like, I, I wanted to keep painting on this painting because I kind of, I had this kind of like, I don't know if it's work ethic or guilt or like it's not a painting or something, but I just couldn't believe that I liked this painting. And it kicked around for a long period after this. And I finally, it just got to the point where I just nothing to do. There's n no moves to make. So it became a painting. Um, this is a inst I don't, this is just install shots. This is how I like to have like different scales of things next to each other. Um, oversized, you know, uh, kind of a still life. I'm still doing, I did a copy of this in my recent show. Like, because it's an oversized, like, still life, it doesn't feel like a still life. Um, but it's a pretty, that's a pretty straightforward painting for me these days. Um, okay. I think I have some more of these kind of process images. Yeah, kind of like that, that thing I was talking about, about um, whether it's fast or slow, like that one that took nine months and I changed it back and forth so many times. It just was terrible. Like I never felt good. And some of the fast ones, I feel, to, I feel like they're not paintings because I didn't touch it enough, but they, there's, they're not asking for anything. So it's almost like a, a trust that there's a, Um, that, that just mysterious, it's doing something kind of thing, you know, it's like, it's mysterious enough, you know. That's my two attitudes about art making. One is the, uh, the freedom to do whatever you want, as long as it meets some standard or something. And then the other one is kind of the empathetic viewer. I'm like a super fan of a lot of different types of image making and art making. And like kind of the, uh, the openness I have when I'm looking at something, I have to remember that too. And like how the criteria can be really flexible for what's a painting or... Uh, this is a general, uh, I usually have a wall in the studio that's like clogged with the recent drawings. So this is what the drawings kind of look like. All kind of different sizes and scrappy and colored. And these are all the beginnings of the paintings. And, gouache and like ballpoint pen markers just the crappier the better the thought the most thoughtless kind of like paper and I'll also leave them on the floor they'll get dirty and like a kind of uh, I think of them like kind of interesting rocks you know when you're on a walk or like a piece of wood that you find it's just like they should be everywhere and you should see them out of the corner of your eye and be like oh yeah look at that that little interesting thing and then you can use it you know if it catches your eye this is another thing i'm doing um that i keep thinking about doing more of is making some of the objects in the painting actually making them physical and the thing i like about it um, is the kind of the backside, which paintings don't do this because i'm not a sculptor i kind of make this like a drawing like frontally and like the backside is this total surprise it's this surprise it's as interesting to me as like a, f a bad move in a painting where I get lost and I get surprised by a painting move so this form here comes out of sorry I'm going to go all the way back to this image um, wow let's see Sorry, I just want to show this, the painting version of this thing that started this sculpture. There it is. All right. So that's this thing that I just made, three-dimensional, and I made it kind of person-sized, you know. Um, and the whole idea is that uh, I, I thought I could make sculptures and then kind of make realistic paintings of the sculptures. That was kind of the idea. 
and uh, that didn't didn't happen, didn't take off or something. The sculpture? Yeah, it's kind of. Oh, sorry. It, is it made of wood? There's like a wood uh, interior structure, and then there's like uh, cotton batting, and then stretch canvas over it. And I, I just wanted to feel more like uh, body or something. So it was really flat, the structure. And I kind of knew from the painting that it was dimensional. You know, it was like a puffy surface or something. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm in a real, like, I don't know about the, I've shown sculptures a few times, but um, I've not shown any, anything that big or... Okay, this is, the, this is the, another, I just want to show one more. This kind of shows the drawing. So this is a drawing. This thing's like this tiny. It's like a little scrappy drawing. And this is a painting that, another one of these like nine month uh, ordeals. I'll do a drawing and I'll do, this one I did several drawings. Like little, there's another drawing about. I mean, that's what I like. It's not, it, See, it's, that's not even true because I, I've, I've finished the painting that, like, it's the deadline. Like, if I, I, I like to have, I know. I like to, yeah, right, right. I never thought about that. Um, I like to have a, like, when I have a deadline, I'll use the whole period. So it just so happens that it's always kind of nine-monthy periods. But um, in my mind now, that's the time it takes to have a baby. <laughs> um, and so this, this is how dumb, like, I, I, okay, so this, pe this drawing was like a horse butt, like behind a horse, and the whole idea is that you, if you stand behind a horse, it's dangerous, you can get kicked or whatever, and I always wanted to make that painting, like a painting that's dangerous to stand in front of. It's a really dumb idea. But I started it, and it's really terrible for a long period of time. Like, I really hated this painting the whole time. I was painting it and just changing it and changing it. And uh, yeah, so, so just cutting away and like reestablishing it. And then it just turns into something that's not like the original drawing at all. And I think that's how it finished. And it's, it's just needed to be this like, half of them need to be frustrating like that and half of them have to be like, because of that one, I can do a fast one or whatever. Um, <clears throat> yeah. And this is, this is kind of the middle fast one. Okay, yeah. And this, I'm going to get into like, this is how, this is grand finale, and then we'll go back to the original paintings, uh, the, the recent paintings. So this was uh, the dumbest, I kind of pin my origin of like wanting to be an artist to Star Wars. I saw it when I was five years old. It's really predictable, and uh, I was born in 72, so I saw it, yeah, in the theater. And uh, the thing that I, I remembered more than anything, more than the story, was the Millennium Falcon, this ship or whatever. It was uh, that it was a human hand. It was like when you're a kid and you don't have a toy, you're like playing with your hand as a ship. And like the cockpit is the thumb or whatever. And the fact that I kind of like, I don't know if that's true, but in my mind, it's like it made so much sense. And uh, it, it was like a misinterpretation of this thing. I thought it was a great like misinterpretation and it had a lot of meaning. It made so much sense that it kind of, uh, uh, I think it's why I have this idea of art being this misinterpretive direct communication thing. Like there's nothing about that feeling that's useful in the movie or in the toy or anything about it. And it's how I think about religion uh, and religious art, like which is some of my favorite art and the fact that I'm like so irreligious, but I still find that the, the art is so meaningful and the, even if it's misinterpreted, uh, just the beauty of it and the interesting construction of everything is just, uh, yeah, just tied into everything I think about art making. So those are, so. Um, I don't know if I have anything much. I don't know how long I've been talking. Do you, do you know? Like, 40 minutes, yeah. So, I don't know, these, these are the most recent ones. I feel like I really can talk about them if you want or answer questions, but um, yeah. Wow, that was rambly. Uh, questions. Yeah, any questions? How do you choose your color? 
I think it's the same way as like the dry brush thing. I feel like I'm not a natural colorist, but I just want a lot of diversity of color. So yeah, it's a lot of stealing kind of from images. I look at uh, old paintings. I also look at this magazine, World of Interiors. Have you ever looked at this? It's like one of the greatest like color combination things. And I'll just start from that and um, try to make weird compliments. And then once I have like this 30 in a row or 20 paintings going at once, I just try to make them a little different from each other, which spurs the kind of like inching the color a little bit weirder and weirder or just super colorful while feeling kind of calm or I don't know, experimentation. Does your oh, yeah. yeah. Do you sketch pastel? Uh, not usually pastel, but I, I have, yeah. But for color, you mean? Yeah. 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 I like pastel because it's so fast, but I, I use gouache mainly because of the color. Like, but yeah, it's mainly gouache and like markers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, it, it was that period of like really like wanting um, them to be red, you know, like I wanted, that's why I like took a lot of time to plan them out and everything. And I think the big shift was just the obvious, like uh, hanging out with more artists and more studio visits and conversations. And I kind of got, um, I lost faith in this like direct communication thing, which I had to re-remember my relationship with like religious imagery or the Star Wars thing or whatever, that the, the miscommunication or the strange communication was just way more um, interesting or slower and weirder conversations came out of the things that even I didn't really understand what I, what I was doing. And did the dry brush thing, did it just come to just fall into it? Yeah. It? Yeah, because those early images were not that. Exactly. I think it was like speed, like trying to paint faster and uh, really relying on drawing more. So I painted them like I drew more, I think. Yeah. Yes. Like, like, how else is it present in, in the work? Or, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I just hope that it is. You know, I mean, I think about um, it's just related to a lot of other things. I think about like, uh, like when you really know a you, you know a song, like you know the sound of a song, but like you don't know the lyrics, but it gives you a feeling. Like it really is. You know, kind of what it's about, even though you couldn't say the word, you know, you can't sing along, but you kind of have that song just like it means something. Um, I just think of it like that. I, I, I do like the idea of dumb to sincere, though. That, that it's something like that. Like it's meaninglessness and like anything that's like thought about and touched and changed and like lived with for nine months, if possible. Um, there is just sincerity in that, like devotion and like attention and yeah it's like redeeming something that's base i'm yeah i'm just into that i'm like romantic about it some, somehow uh too many yeah i mean melissa brown <laughs> no i mean when I first moved to New York, I saw like Dana Schutz's first show and it's like, it just was insane, you know? I just felt like 
I still feel like that all the time, even though I've been painting for a while, I still feel like I see shows and I'm like, I don't even know how to paint, you know, even younger artists. So I, I just feel like it's endless, you know? Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of a, I am a super fan of uh, things that are not like me, things that are like me. Um, I kind of want everything to be good, you know, so, yeah. And I go through periods where I don't do studio visits because it gets exhausting and when I have people over, I have to clean up, you know, so I, I do go through periods where I miss it, <laughs> right? Do you not clean up? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like the, it's the, it's the only reason left. I've been talking a lot about being in New York. It's the only reason left to be in New York is to be in proximity to artists because otherwise it's too difficult, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's really all about um, your gang, you know, like a group of people, um, studio visits, you know, be generous and have people give that back to you. That's, I mean, that's what it's all about. I don't know, yeah. Go see everything um, that you can handle and keep up with people that you're hanging out with now because, yeah, there's a certain percentage of people will keep going and a certain percentage won't, but um, to be interested is to kind of be around people that are interested, I think. You're already not an outsider artist once you're in the, the school system or whatever, so you need a lot of, uh, I don't know, a lot of luck and momentum and friendships and, yeah. Sounds so positive. <laughs> it's true, though. It's true. It's a good note. No, I don't think that. <clears throat> I don't think that at all. I think some painters really think they know how to paint. You know, and some painters do really know how to paint. Like, I don't think Dana Schutz has ever said that she doesn't know how to paint. Like, she really knows how to paint, you know? Don't you think? Do you feel like you say that? Yeah. Oh, you do? I didn't know that. I feel like I hear a lot of painters. I mean, I think that's a magic thing to hang on to, too. It's like, that's, it's magic. I didn't make it. It made itself, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so that's definitely in there. But I literally didn't learn. How, like, I think I'm, there's a percentage of artists now that are all self-taught because no one knows how to do all the stuff, you know, like mediums. And I mean, some, some people do. I don't know. Does it, do people know that anymore? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Do you know that stuff, Sean? You know some of that stuff. Yeah, like I never learned it from anyone. Like I just like, it's all experimentation. And so I just like found a way to work. But uh, yeah, that's why I say it. I mean, I know I make paintings, but I don't, I don't think I could teach someone how to use medium, for example. Like I have no idea. Sometimes. <laughs> I teach I teach how to how to t how to look at paintings. Yeah. 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 I was just talking about that too. Like I can talk about everybody's paintings except for mine. I find it very hard to talk about. But um yeah, I don't I don't teach technically. Like I don't teach at an academy, you know. But yeah. YouTube videos. You can learn how to paint. Then you got to find some good ideas. That's all, what, or dumb ideas. I mean, I feel I feel like it's it's different. Like this painting um, feels like it's both old. Like it's like some people don't even see the figures like there's a lion in the bottom right and a guitar player on her back playing a, a left-handed guitar so it's like i was amazed at how many people didn't even see the picture and i didn't know what they saw at all but to me this is like a very like classically drawn i mean the lion's kind of impossible and it has a short body or whatever and the pose is not i don't know it's a very weird pose but um, i think this is really different from the last group of things. 
but I think it looks like my, I'm, I'm really interested in trying to do that, try to make entirely different look, but it was made by one hand. Yeah, that's what I always want. So, um, yeah, it's an attempt. Like I, I, I see myself making a really tight show one day, like a really, like no fuzzy edges and just everything like contained. <laughs> and then one that's like really thick and painterly and like I have, yeah, just endless idea. I want to paint like a bunch of different other people all the time, so. I'm going to do that. Thank you.